Hey there, good morning. Welcome everybody to another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host. And uh, I think we've got a pretty interesting topic this morning. If we can get the chicken over there to hush. She's got some things on her mind this morning also that uh, apparently she needs to talk about also. But hey, listen, when you get here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, doesn't matter. I know a bunch of you catch this show on the replay. That is cool with me. Just leave me a comment down below. Let me know that you are here. That encourages me and it sets you up to get notified from Facebook uh, as the comment conversation continues. So, and I haven't mentioned this in a couple of days. If you happen to be listening on your favorite podcast catcher through uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Streaker, or TuneIn, you can watch the show live on Facebook. Just go to uh, TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. That gets you to the right page, and you can see everything that is going on there. Participate in the conversation, ask questions, leave comments live, that sort of thing. All right? So, um, hey, Joe, good morning. Thank you for being here. So yesterday we talked a little bit about um, priority, choosing priorities. And this morning, as I was uh, doing some of my reading and, and journaling this morning, I came across this quote from Simon Sinek that I wanted to share with you and then ask you how this applies to you every day. Some people see the thing they want and some people see the thing keeping them from what they want. Some people see the thing they want. Other people see the things keeping them from what they want. I say that slightly differently. You've probably heard me say that entrepreneurs are the, the difference between entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs and everybody else is that we see opportunity where others see obstacles. But here's the thing, so as you think about this, you think about what, what Simon said and the, the, uh, the quote that I often use, you, you might have this idea that, okay, well, that's not me. I always see obstacles. The only thing in my way are obstacles. <laughs> um, that just takes a special mindset. That's an entrepreneur. I guess I'm not one. Here's what I want to point out to you. My goal here is not to convert you into an entrepreneur. Don't, don't mistake what I am saying. My goal here is to encourage you to think about obstacles in a different way. Because all of the people, the, the people that Simon talks about, the people that I talk about, people I work with day to day basis, me included. We all have obstacles. Just because you're an entrepreneur, just because you're a business leader, just because you're the boss, doesn't mean that there are no obstacles in the way. What it does mean is that you look at those obstacles in a different way and find the way around them. I mean, one of the, one of the things that's always been challenging for me as a leader is when those people on my team come to me with a problem that I feel they should have been able to solve. And I used to be really frustrated by that, and I would get on to them about that, admonish them about that, and then as I started putting some thought into it, I came to the realization that the reason they don't know how to solve that problem is my problem. Solving it on a day-to-day -day basis keeps me in the loop. My job as a leader is to work myself out of a job, is to equip them and give them the tools so that they can do the job without me. Now, that sounds dangerous to a lot of people. Well, if I work myself out of a job, why would I, why would I stay around? Exactly. Because you get to move on to something else. So as I looked at those people on my team who would come to me with problems that I felt they should have been able to solve, I, instead of being frustrated with them, I started training them. Well, and, and this, every one of them can tell you that I've asked them this question. <laughs> they get really frustrated with this question sometimes. Well, what would you do? Right? Every time uh, every time. Yeah, just about every time. <clears throat> Maybe if there's something time sensitive, 
or my time is sensitive, I'll just give them an answer. But generally speaking, I try to respond to their question with, well, what would you do? What do you think is the right thing to do? How would you proceed here? And I put them through the thought exercise of thinking about the problem, coming up with a solution, evaluating the pros and cons, and making the best choice in the moment, right? Because that's all any of us can do is make the best choice we can with the information we have. So by doing that, I have now transformed the way that they look at that obstacle because the next time they encounter what today they perceive to be an obstacle, the next time it's, oh, I've seen that before, I know what to do. Right? The thing that we do as leaders, that I want to encourage you to do, is give them the environment to fail safely. I wish I had that. I mean, I did have that. I wish I'd had more of it. I wish I had it today. Um, give them the environment to make the wrong decision. Sometimes when I say, what would you do, and they give me an answer, I'm thinking, well, that's probably not the best thing to do, but okay. And I let them experience that, evaluate that, learn from that. All right? Now, here's the point in telling that whole story. If they can do it, so can you. Just because uh, your safety net might not be as big. I mean, the one thing I tell everybody on my team is never be afraid to make a decision. I've always got your back outside the room. Right? I'm never going to let anybody rail on my team members outside the room. Inside the room, I might give you the what for. Right? Especially if you've done this a couple of times and you're still not getting it. <laughs> but I don't have that happen very often, though. Um, but they know I've got their back. What do you do, right? When you encounter an obstacle, do you sit there and stare at the thing that's keeping you from what you want? Or do you focus on the thing that you want and then say, ah, this obstacle thing, I just have to get past that, but that's what I'm, I'm really after, right? Turn that obstacle into an opportunity. And then the next time, that obstacle's not so big. All right, Joe says, I believe that identifying obstacles can lead to solutions to overcome them. Absolutely. The one factor that influences business enthusiasts is how to react, prioritize, and identify opportunities with objectives that are worth the obstacle and within profitable margin. That is 100%. As much as I disagreed with you yesterday, Joe, I agree with you 100% today. Hey, Corey, good morning. So, yes, if we keep our eye on the prize, and this, and so I want to tie this back into yesterday. Now, yesterday I said you can only have one priority, and Joe and I agree to disagree on this, but you have that one priority. This is the objective for whatever time period, year, quarter, week, day, doesn't matter. You know, what is my priority for this hour? For this hour, the 7 o'clock hour, every day, my priority is to do the show. I've got plenty of other stuff to do, but if I do all that other stuff and don't do this, then this was a bad hour for me, right? When you And, and so, from time to time, I have obstacles. My laptop can't connect to the Internet. I can take my phone out, right? I find ways to overcome that obstacle to get to the outcome that I have made a priority for this hour, right? And when we know that that's the priority, and then we can use that to motivate us past the obstacle, that's when we're able to get to that success state that we talk about all the time. We don't let the obstacles hold us back. Now, here's the other thing that happens uh, frequently, and I'm way over on time, so maybe I'll save this for tomorrow. I'll tease you with it this morning, though. We see the outcome that we're trying to get. As we approach the outcome, an obstacle presents itself, so we stop, we sit down, and go to work on the obstacle. Because, you know, this might happen again, so we, we need to put in a long-term fix for this. Even though that outcome is maybe a short-term outcome. And sometimes that's a convenient way to just, you know, redirect ourselves from tomorrow's work. 
Sometimes it needs to be done. We will definitely talk about that tomorrow. That's a great topic. Hey, listen, it's uh, Tuesday. That means the radio show's coming up at the top of the hour. Great guest this morning, Tony Eberhardt from New Leaf Digital. Be sure and tune in. You can listen to that on, I almost said KRLD. I went back to my Dallas days. Uh, WTKI, <laughs> 14.50 AM, 92.9 FM, or you can watch us live, Talk Radio for Entrepreneurs. That takes you back to our Facebook page, and you can uh, can watch us do the show live from the studio uh, this morning. So, that again, that's at, uh, a little bit past the top of the hour, seven minutes after the hour is when the show starts. Be sure and tune in for that. That will be a great conversation, I am sure. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk about working on the obstacle instead of achieving the outcome. That will be a great topic. All right? Be sure and tune in again tomorrow for that. Hey, listen... If you get value from our conversations every morning, I would appreciate it very much if you would share this video. And all you have to do is go down in the comments, tag somebody in the comments that needs to hear this message this morning. I'm sure we all know somebody that needs to hear this message from time to time. I need to hear it every once in a while. So tag them in the comments. They'll come over and watch it. And if they find value in it, they'll follow also. I appreciate that. I hope uh, they will also. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you, or for this show. I'll see you at the top of the hour on Talk Radio for Entrepreneurs. You have a terrific Tuesday. See you tomorrow. <laughs>